Greetings everyone. Welcome to a Model 16B video that is not me restoring it. This is going to be less hardware focused and we're finally going to watch this thing do something other than run the diagnostics. And that's because I got my Fred 4.8 in the mail and I'm really excited about this. So this is the Fred hard drive emulator adapted for the Model 2 line of systems, the 8-inch systems. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to install Xenix version 135. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use a preloaded Xenix 3.2 image for this, um, for my day-to-day -day stuff and for most of the future videos. But I figured you don't see much of 135, and especially on any of the YouTube stuff I've done, I think it's all been Xenix 3. So we're going to use Xenix 135. We're going to go through the install process. I'm going to talk about that a little bit and install it from not quite floppy disk, but from the Lothrec here. So let's get this thing powered up and we'll see exactly what happens. I've got to get over to repeat break here. There we go. All right, we're going to drop the camera on the tripod and we're going to get to it. All right, so I'm just going to hit enter here for Xenix. While this is booting, you're going to say, but Chris, you skipped the disk util step. Yep. Um, with disk util, you're not going to be able to format images on the fret. So what I've done here is using TRS-80 GP, uh, created a Fred, or a Fred, a Drem image of the boot disk, and then converted that over to the file that Fred needs, hard dash, hard four dash zero, um, which will boot this thing up, or will boot this thing, up, which will be usable for the file system. So while the disk is physically formatted, um, the the Xenix file system does not yet exist on this. So we're gonna put that on there, and then that will lead right into the installation. I do wish to initialize my hard disk, yes. Let's turn off caps lock. Okay, it has been formatted with disk util. Well, technically, no. Yes, it has been physically formatted. I love the prompts in this. Good. Um, please consult your hard disk owner's manual. Okay, I formatted it with 1024 cylinders. and eight heads. It's going to give me a, a 70 meg drive. Okay, here we go. It's going to copy the, copy the boot track over, and you can't see it, but when it does, the read and write lights on the Fred will will go. Yep, it just wrote the, the boot track out. The blue light came on, and now we're going to make the file system, and this is going to take probably a, at least a while. Um, I don't even know how many minutes it's going to take, but we're going to let this thing do its thing, and then we'll come back when it's done. Here we go. We're going to mount and we're going to start copying files over. Well, let's go in case any of you have noticed, I have sleeves on today. Um, over the last just hair over a year, year and a month, I've shed about 80 pounds. And that's um, the only relevant part this has on why I'm wearing this is because I used to be warm all the time and never have to worry about this. I was wearing shorts and t shirts in the winter, but I'm down in my basement and it's cold down here, especially given the constant barrage of arctic blasts we've been getting where I live. So now, if I want to play down here with this, I have to do this to keep myself from freezing. This never used to be a problem back when I was a walrus, but now I am not, so it is.
while we're watching this go, listening to the Lothrock do its little pretend head-seeking sound, you might be wondering, why do this? Why not just grab the image off the archive and use that? Or installed in the emulator, at least, to make it a little faster. And, well, I don't have any 8-inch media to be able to make discs out of it, although that would be cool. Um, there is still something to living the experience of actually installing this, even if the floppy drive and the hard drive are just kind of analogs to what would have been there. Actually going through it, waiting for it to go at the speed it would have gone, interacting with the machine while it's installing and just kind of sitting here watching it, as one would do, is uh, part of the experience of owning the machine and uh, living with it. And Well, for my day-to-day, -day, I'm going to use the Xenix 3.2 image with the burst mode patch, because my machine does not have the upgraded PAL. I just use the pre-made images, but it's fun to go through the experience, so that's why. And I think this, I was just going to say, this should be about ready to, to do something different. Okay, now, the Fred is a little finicky, so if it fails to start, Fred 4.8 and uh, Xenix can be a little finicky on boot, sometimes taking multiple times. We'll see what happens, but I'm just going to give it the old reset. The right lay is off, so it's safe. Okay. There's the bootloader. For each flop in the distribution set, insert the disk into drive 0 and hit the enter key or type Y. And after the last floppy, type no. Okay, so the very first floppy was the installation media, so I'm just going to flip down to disk 2. And I'm going to say first floppy Y. There's only two, there's two and three. And these two are just tar files. And then once we get to the end of the second floppy, we're just going to tell it no. Seventy-five. Next floppy. Just three. Yes. And that's it. There's no new floppy. I'm just going to hit check that. Installation complete. And now we can, can type Control-D to continue with normal startup. Now it's just like we boot. Feels like the first time. Feels like the very first time. So once we start that back up, we're going to fix the time. But in the meantime, it's not going to matter too much. Welcome to TRS Scenix 135. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's set a password. And we're going to make a user. I do not. It actually doesn't, doesn't actually take the parameter. I forgot. Change anything now? It's created all my stuff. I do not want to add another user. Let's log out. Now log back in. Hopefully, I didn't hit any of the keys. I must have. Oh no, oh, I didn't. All right. Should be in user Chris. Yes, 
Yes, I am. Let's have a Crow profile file. Very cool. Oh, this one doesn't say copyright Microsoft. The Xenix 3 one does. Um, okay, one more thing. Let's just, for the fun of it, uh, install MBasic, right? This wouldn't be a Tandy computer without BASIC on it, so it's going to get BASIC on it. And again, I'm going to use Xenix 3 for all of my other stuff, but this just seemed like a fun thing to do. The install program on here will read most Radio Shack installation disks. Just run install. It'll go out and pull the crap off the disk and dump it on the hard drive. And look at this, multi-user BASIC. TRS HTML 16, thank you for buying another Radio Shack package. Oh, Radio Shack, you have just such a nice package. Installation complete. Remove the diskette. Hammer's gonna queue to quit. Alright. I could ask you back and forth, but eh. Whatever. This video is shorter than any of the other videos I've done lately. Well, let's just load in basic. There we go, TRS 80 model 16 basic. Version 120 Decimal Math, copyright 1982 Microsoft. That is MBASIC installed. And we have we have some other good stuff over in Etsy. Let's see what we got here. Now, Etsy is interesting in these machines. Oh, by the way, uh, control 1 is uh, pipe, control forward slash is backslash, just uh, in case you wanted to know. And it also means that I apparently, because I put the backslash on there, broke it. So let's not do that this time. That's better. Um, Xenix, especially earlier Unix, is more interesting in that there's a lot of executable stuff in Etsy. And for those of us that uh, maybe came into Unix a little later, System 5 or later, that's not as common. So you see mount in there. And D message and all these other great things, along with configuration files. So, for example, see what the TTYs are. Okay, 9600 on all those. Oops. Oh, there's no TTY type. Oh, there is. I can't type. All adds 25. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's the Xenix install. I really just wanted to walk through the process of doing the installation. And since it's time to go, I think we're all done with this. There's not much else I really want to do. I just wanted to show the machine running, um, doing something other than being in various states of disassembly and disrepair. It's restored now. I figured it would be fun to do something period on this machine, install period software on period machine, even if the storage devices are pretending to be period, but are still very cool. So I'm going to just shut this thing down. And there are a couple more projects on the docket, one involving this machine and my 16A. And I'm going to be using Xenix 3 on both machines for that. I do have a couple of other hardware projects that will be coming to this machine um, that we'll see in the future. So until next time, thank you for watching. Really appreciate all the views, comments, and conversations uh, related to this machine, both on YouTube and off. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.